Patrick Gargano here from the Learning and Certifications team. Along with myself, Hank <laughs> Preston, also from the Learning and Certifications team, back for another look at the CCNA Blueprints, this time Domain 3 IP Connectivity. And uh, I think it's pretty exciting where we're standing here. Yeah. This really shows you what the CCNA lines you up for. The ability to dive into artificial intelligence, cloud, security, or automation. Uh, what do you think, Patrick? Is IP connectivity important for all those? <laughs> it's, it's the foundation, right, for all of that. It, if, if that traffic can't reach its destination, if there's an IP issue, none of this is going to happen for you. Um, so domain three is called IP connectivity. It's another big one, folks. So it's 25%. Again, I've been saying this the last two videos. So what that percentage means is if you get 100 questions on the CCNA exam, which you won't, but let's just go with that nice round number, 25% um, of those questions will come from domain three, which is all about IP connectivity. Yeah, and uh, those domain percentages are really important. We've mentioned it a few times. The other way I like to look at it is if it's 25%, one out of every four questions is going to come from this domain. So it really is a critical one to be super comfortable with. And IP, IP connectivity, right? This is all about layer three, right? The ability to route. And this is where routers come in. Uh, in our domain two video, we talked about switches, exactly. getting access to the network. Well, now we're going to talk and focus in about IP connectivity, which is all about routing. Uh, what type of routing is important in domain three here? There's two. We can look at static routing. So all kinds of issues around static routing, obviously how to configure a static route, a default route. So everything about that. Um, and then we go to OSPF, which is our dynamic routing protocol. So again, a big amount uh, of, of, uh, of topics around OSPF, configuring it, understanding how it actually operates and then verifying operation. Yeah, this domain is all about kind of that side how we go from one network to another, that's what routing is all about. And so as we've mentioned, right, you're gonna to have to be able to configure and verify that both static and OSPF uh, routing are working. And then after that, um, domain, uh, what is it? 3.1, task.1 is interpret the components of the routing table. Yes. This is a critical Huge. aspect yeah. Yeah. of becoming a CCNA certification. There will be plenty of questions where you're shown a routing table, right? You'll get a, a screenshot or text out of a routing table and asked, hey, Given this routing table, where would this traffic go for its next hop? And you're going to have to consider things like administrative distance, yes. right? Longest prefix match. And so this brings us back to something we talked about way back when in domain one, IP addressing and subnetting. And so some of these topics, right, from one domain to another come together. And so synthesizing, bringing that information together is something you're going to have to do as a CCNA. Again, shameless plug, uh, <laughs> CCNA prep program on the CLN, uh, Cisco Learning Network. We did a couple of videos on static routing. We did one on OSPF. We're, we're gonna have another one soon on specifically what Hank is talking mm -hmm. about, understanding how this routing table is, first of all, put together, how it's built up with different entries, prefix uh, values from different routing sources, and then figuring out how, as Hank was saying, that packet is forwarded to a specific destination. The other one that jumps out at me is 3.5, which is all about redundancy at layer three. Um, again, here, where you're not asked to configure it. It's all about understanding what the different uh, protocols are that exist and, and how they operate. The last task that comes up into IP connectivity is something that uh, kind of touches on an important aspect of being a network engineer, redundancy, right? Networks are really critical, and so are the routers in a network. And so in 3.5, you're gonna be asked to describe the purpose of how first hop redundancy protocols work, right? This uh, capability for a network to actually recover if a primary router goes down or balance the ability to route across different pieces. So there's a lot of really important topics here in domain three, which is why, despite the fact that there's only five tasks in here, again, 25% of the blueprint. That's a really good point, right? Domain one, lots of tasks, fewer tasks here, but a heavier weight. Um, and as Hank was saying at the beginning, this is fundamental to get all of these cool things working, right? Absolutely. Again, see the new version of CCNA talks about AI. We talk about cloud and we talk about automation and programmability and obviously we talk about security, mm -hmm. but you need to get your routing working properly, making sure that the packets are getting to where they need to go um, for this to work. Yeah. So hopefully we've uh, relayed the fact that domain three is really critical in your studies for CCNA, but also in your future as a network engineer. So thanks for joining us for this video. Uh, we'll be back to talk about the other domains that make up the CCNA blueprint. Talk to you soon. Bye.